Hey guys, welcome back to this week's episode of Who's Gushing for Part B. We're going to be doing the 10th Doctor Adventures, Season 1, featuring the 10th Doctor and Adonis Noble. I thank you. Uh, Technophobia, The Time Reaver, and Death and the Queen. Technophobia, Harriet Skelly, take us away. Yep. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so, Technophobia. Uh, where do I start? At the beginning, normally. Yeah, it is. Mm. Is that a reference to Lord of the Rings? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Donna and the Doctor have landed um, around now, I guess, is the idea? Yeah, it'd be about to, now, our now. Yeah, closer to the um, to the actual um, airing of this particular episode. Uh, 2011. So, was that seven-ish years? Yeah, Roughly. Uh, yeah so it's further mm-hmm. along than when Donna's from yeah definitely further along um and uh release of the new ipad i mean impad um, <laughs> uh, which has siri enabled on, um, effectively which is now called sylvia <laughs> fantastic oh, big finish you sly dogs um anyway uh so they're taking a look around um having a bit of a time um but we're getting we get introduced to uh the steve jobs the lady steve jobs of, the, um, of this company um <laughs> Who has invented? Who, who's a big CEO? Uh, she's a you know, big tech guru. Um, who's who's invented the stuff? She's, she's a very busy lady, and um, and she's having a bit of a some technical trouble. Um, but is sort of trying to ignore it. She goes on a little bit of a conference call. Um, and she she has a bit of a uh, an interview, and with clearly Nick Briggs, that's my favorite yeah, part. <laughs> very clearly with Nick Briggs. Um, it's a good time. Um, meanwhile, uh, the doctor and Donna are um just having a having a good time in, in, a, in a factory esque um. Robo museum that's effectively going on. Um, Donna meets up with this um, this really nice lady, uh, Bex with X. Bex with uh, X. Bex with X. Um, who is another temp. Um, so immediately Donna uh, is uh, very happy with uh, with meeting her. Um, effectively, what goes down is um, a Lithuanian person. Was it? Was it from? Yeah, Lithuanian. Lithuanian um, yeah. Uh, comes down on the lift and is freaking right out about something. Um, and everyone else. Uh, has has su- suddenly disappeared from outside of the museum. Um, things are going down really, really downhill. Um, and basically, the doctor su- starts to figure out that everyone is is suddenly completely afraid of all of their technology. Like they've they've they they think that it's crazy. Like like initially, it's like like an old person getting scared of technology sort of stuff. With <laughs> oh no, I can't. I don't want to try any of the newfangled stuff. Um, which which is totally a thing that happens, and that's why like initially you're sort of like okay where's the story going and then all of a sudden people are just getting terrified by by technology like um, the lithuanian guy is is terrified of the elevator that's talking to him about where he's going and he's just screaming <laughs> it's pretty great um eventually the doctor figures this all out um the 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 ceo manages to call like the the, the desk and is asking for help they go up and, and um they take the stairs of course to try and find out what's happening uh, the doctor does some some scanning of the brain uh trying to figure out what's happening Turns out that uh, everyone is losing their, um, slowly losing their um, higher level brain function, and they're slowly getting dumber and dumber. Effectively, and he's he's freaking out about it um, because suddenly the, he seems to think that the Sonic doesn't work. And I'm just like, big finish, getting rid of this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Gone, <laughs> gone. Anyway, uh, they do bring it back, but because they, you know, it's that era, I guess. Um, but anyway, um, meanwhile, uh, Donna goes off to to, to uh, talk to the Lithuanian guy who's freaking about stuff. Um, turns out that because of his loss of brain function, he was scared of his of the vacuum cleaner. Um, which he was just using earlier in the story. Just, yeah. Um, which gets... It's funny at first. You're just like, oh, he's afraid of the vacuum cleaner. Oh, my God. And Donna's like, it's fine. You're just, you're just, you're just wrapped in the cords. You'll be okay. Just gonna calm down. <laughs> it's chasing and after it's me. Like, it's, like it's chasing after me. And he's like vacuuming and stuff. And then he falls out a window on the fifth floor, and you're like, "All right, I forgot this is a big finish story." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the big finish is like, "We got the rights to New Who, but we ain't writing New Who." <laughs> so he did, um, and not a nice way either. Mm. Um, so that's not good. Um, anyway, uh, eventually the uh, uh, the Bix the next is trying to um, she was freaking out about uh, getting to her grandmother. Uh, so Donna's like, "Where where is it at?" Oh, you know, it's only like twenty minutes away. And she's like, "Okay, sweet." Uh, and the doctor's like, "If it's, you're not going to take longer than an hour." Um, if, if anyone starts freaking out, just comes right back. And she's like, okay, sweet. They go to this train station, um, even though the, tra- the trains don't seem to be running. It was like a sign that says, like, everyone get out, fr- like, freaking out. Just, like, sp- spooky, like, zombie-esque, zombie story-esque stuff. Going. 
um, was everyone's just like completely deserted the, the place because they're, they're completely terrified of everything from their cars to their phones to their, to their credit cards. Um, and then they, they get down to the train station area, um, but Bex is starting to freak out and starting to forget about, about technology stuff. Um, but Donna's still pushing her along to try and get to her grandmother's. And then a uh, muscly, awesome... Dude, this Super guy is great. <laughs> Fantastic train driver shows up, and he's awesome. Um, <laughs> yep, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> he's just a cool guy in general. Um, he shows up and is all like, um, "Hey, you guys are not you guys are not crazy." And she and Donna's like, "Hello, <laughs> <laughs> hello, Donna Noble." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then they see uh, some some aliens coming through the, the train tracks, and Bix is like, "I'm gonna I'm gonna stay here and try and figure out what's going on." I don't think it's a good idea because you are kind of losing it. And she's just like, I'm just, I'm, I can't go back up those that escalator. So I'm just going to stay here. And I was like, okay, cool. I'll just take the hunk man and we'll go. Um, she does. Uh, she takes him to the doctor. And it turns out that he seems to be relatively immune to what he was going on. He's keeping, keeping all of his faculties. Um, the doctor's like, okay, we're going to do some brain scans, try and figure out what's going on. We'll go back to the TARDIS. He gets in the TARDIS and then he starts wigging right out. <laughs> Um, it looks like uh, whatever's happening is affecting him too uh, but luckily because he he has even higher brain function in humans um he's able to like push things in the right places so that he can continue most of his functionality for it. and still manages to figure out a plan of getting everybody safe so you know he's the doctor anyway um <laughs> sure it was on itself admittedly <laughs> uh so basically what happens is they go down to the, into the trains uh to try and find out where these aliens are um they get hunk of a man to drive a train um, over the power line, so they cut the power. Meanwhile, Doctor and Donna uh, get captured, and while there's, there's that, that small loss of power, and the Doctor's got all of his faculties back, he does a bit of jiggery pokery with the with the um, with the signal sender, so that it backfires and makes all the aliens get dumb instead. Uh, <laughs> but meanwhile, he explains that they are they use a an interdimensional. Um, traveling device of some kind and Donna's just like don't you do that like fizzle into places and he's just like don't even don't even go there <laughs> um and they do this fantastic like describing of the way that it's there that very clearly could not have been done with 2003 um like <laughs> with their their um cgi stuff where like <laughs> the the ship is like phys- phasing out of existence and, like around the edges sort of stuff and it's it's just funny that big finish is just like hey we're an audio story <laughs> you know? we don't even need a budget like deal with it um then um good old uh signal comes back on because they they fix it and he's just like yeah so i kind of backfired your stuff on the, on you and they're like oh no we're gonna get dumb um get in the ship hey let's leave ah oh, did you did you remember to do the thing that that stops us from blowing up boom <laughs> <laughs> yeah so uh, the doctor totally just killed the alien race but hey yeah right man who never would <laughs> Make this culture um, a man, a culture of who, people who never would, except for the time <laughs> I blew up this place. Yeah, and then uh, good old uh, Donna realizes that there's not her time, um, so she sets up the hunk of a man with Bex, and then they leave. After the doc tells Jill Meadows that it's all going to be alright, and she's not going to have a busy day today because he's a really nice guy. And there you go, that is technophobia. Yeah, yeah. Um, so um, I'll grab the late crow's thoughts coming for her and Scallies, uh, and then I'll wrap it up and move us on to Time Reaver. The late crow technophobia. Man, I sound so much more jovial on this one. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why Part B has that effect on people. <laughs> it sort of does. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a good time. It's a really good time. Um, yeah. Um, I do feel I did love that um, the way Ten takes out the Cognoscenti at the end was reminded me a little bit of the way he took out the um, Family of Bloodship at the end of their story. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm dumb. Oh, you've, you've ruined everything. <laughs> I sure have, kiddo. <laughs> yep. Also, I love the naming of the alien as well. The Cognoscenti. <laughs> like, that was them literally taking the piss out of how New Who named stuff. Yeah. yeah it's like, cog. Well, they do, they do brain stuff. Uh, co- co- cognitive. Co- yeah. Co- cognoscenti. Done. I love how, like, Ten's even like, really? The Cognoscenti? And you're psychic. Yes. That's so <laughs> dumb. Like,. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> David Tennant and Catherine Tate had such a good time with this. <laughs> yeah, I love um because uh, they they didn't do a behind the scenes track, which just breaks my heart. But um they did a whole bunch of behind the scenes YouTube videos about this. It was just so did. good. <laughs> They're so happy to be in Big Finish. Like, yeah, we've got competent writers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we get good stories. <laughs> they get the Big Finish lunch. Yeah. Oh yeah, they <laughs> get the lunch. <laughs> they get the lunch. I want a Big Finish lunch so bad. Like, I don't even want to like even be in a story. I just want to turn up and have a feed at Big Finish. <laughs> <laughs> like, 
<laughs> That's actually true. Yeah, Kai Owen, uh, the guy who plays Reese, is like, oh, bloody hell, I always heard about the bloody lunches here, and they're bloody fantastic. Like, <laughs> like Kai <laughs> Owen, I was like, yes, Kai Owen, yes. Bloody hell, Gwen, come and have some lunches. <laughs> bloody lunch, Gwen. <laughs> bloody lunch, Gwen. So good. Absolutely perfect. But, um, yeah, it's, it's a great story. Just, yeah. All right. Okay, cool. Uh, Harris Kelly, Dick Knight, Fabio. Yeah, it's, um, it's really good, basically. <laughs> Big Fun is just not what they're doing. It's so, it's so refreshing. It really is. Just, <laughs> once, now that they've got, like, proper rights to, to New Who, there's just no, there's just, there's just no excuse anymore, you know? Like, there's just, there's nothing. There's no excuse yeah. to not listen to Big Finish. There's no excuse for, for, for New Who to be bad, because Big Finish just showed that it was, it was perfectly possible for it to be good. <laughs> And it's, it's all their fault, basically. Like, <laughs> exactly. Big Finish, like, do you know you can actually write good stories with these characters? I can. Yeah, like these, you know how these characters what? actually could have been good, especially, especially Donna. Like, yeah, you know, she was a fantastic character. And what have you done? Like, <laughs> what have you done? She was like totally on the. Be- what, who even was the main character in the two shadow we just talked about in Part A? Donna's not really in it. Martha's sort of in it. Was the Doctor the main character? Was he? He was, Who knows? he was in it too. That, that was someone, in it. Can someone teach Helen Raynor the um, most basic of story structures, the hero's journey? There's not <laughs> a single character in that two, two shard that followed that arc at all. <laughs> yeah, and they killed Ross, the only character who could have done it. I was yeah. like, what? This is so. I'm sorry we're talking about part A again. I'm so sorry. It's just like. <laughs> well, that's just what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Puppy, much better, yeah it's, and that's the thing. That's why we that's effectively did this, is because. This this version of of New Who is is significantly better, and it's just you know they don't have they didn't obviously they didn't have the visual medium, but you don't they, they don't lose anything by it. You know? <laughs> right? Still got so much, and I mean, even they gain by it. Yeah, they really do because because we're the budget. It. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just there's no excuse, you know, and that's that's really what Big Finish Big Finish show. And now that now that New Who is in Big Finish, all these people who are all like, I don't want to listen to it. Like you don't have any excuse now. The the Doctor Who that you like is now there, and yeah. they'll show you what good stories are about. <laughs> Absolutely, that's why I love. Like I know we talked about it last week, but Paul McGann again. He was like, ever since Night of the Doctor, New Who fans have actually been listening to Big Finish, and it's been awesome. Yeah. Like people are like, hey, I listened to Big Finish, and it's awesome, right? It's so yeah. awesome. <laughs> and it's like, this that's is so fan. hype. That's the only reason he probably agreed to do it in the first place. <laughs> he was like, people might actually find out about what Big Finish is. And I'm like, man, I am such a bloody hipster. I knew what Big Finish was before it was cool. <laughs> 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 I'm such a loser. But um, not as much as Redigan. So, uh, <laughs> you know. Redigan. 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 <laughs> hey, don't reference another bit of fiction than this. Um, so for me, Technophobia, um, I thoroughly enjoyed. Um, I thought the Lithuanian character was handled quite tactfully uh because i mean like it's kind of funny because he's like getting chased around by vacuum but then like when he falls you realize that he was like legitimately terrified like proper no, no, terrified he died. he died in a terrifying manner yes yeah. it, it is actually awful but you just can't help but laugh initially it's yeah like, yeah this is hilarious yeah because donna's like <laughs> it's a vacuum and you're tangled in the I cable mean, i suppose you could say his death sucked oh <laughs> am i that bad harry it's going <laughs> yes <laughs> Didn't pull any punches. Didn't pull a single punch just then. Um, yeah. I, I think it was... The the thing was, is as soon as Donna and Tennant, I mean, and Ten started talking, um, that's funny that his acting name is Tennant. Just, yeah. That's too good. Because what's his real surname? McDonald. Eh? Um, yeah. Yeah, so Scottish. So Scottish. Um, <laughs> it's just with the... When they came on, I was like, wow, this actually like immediately... Is like I'm watching a new Who episode. It's so weird how they managed to encapsulate that era of Doctor Who. And it's funny because like I'm not a huge fan of the Russell run, but they, they somehow they make it work, and I don't know how to put my finger on it. Like outside because of they just, just wrote a good story. Yeah, I mean outside of just writing a good story. <laughs> no, but it's just it. Like you could the, the the Russell T era doesn't fail because because Russell's really camp. Like it's fine if it was camp. It just could have just been the camp era. Mm. But they just had terrible, terrible writing. And it could have been if, if they just didn't have terrible, terrible writing. It just would have been the camp era. It yeah. would have been fine by me. We can have a camp era. Sure, yeah, exactly. I mean, like, you know, yeah. We had a multicolored doctor come on. <laughs> <laughs> a man who was every color of the rainbow climbed out after the talking bird. Um, so <laughs> it's, yeah, it's just really strange because as soon as I heard it, I was like, my, my the, the hair on the back of my neck stood up. I was like, oh no, it sounds like new. 
<laughs> but it just worked. And I love like the the mannerisms of Ten and Donna were preserved and they 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 were used in a way where it didn't come off as like annoying like it sort of does in the Russell run. Um, mm. She doesn't say wizard though. I was pretty sad. She doesn't say wizard in this entire box set. And the last story in this box set, she should have said wizard. Oh, that's just wizard. I was pretty miffed. I was like, big finish, you let me down here, kids. Um, but it was like, Ten's like, oh, I should have had a little shop. Oh, dongles. I love dongles. Like, it was just like, it was so Ten. And mm. like, you know, anybody who knows me knows that Ten's my least favorite doctor. But like, big finish make him work. And I'm like, man, I'm sorry, Ten. <laughs> I'm because so it sorry. There, there was nothing. Yeah, I don't think that there's anything wrong. There's certainly nothing wrong with Tenet. Oh hell no! No, Tenet's incredible. Um, and when you when you really think about it, like Ten, Ten does make sense in in the in the very long game of things. But when it comes to to the the crap that he did, yeah. <laughs> the crap that they pulled for him, it, there's no there's no there's not really any excuse. <laughs> but, um, I, I don't love Rose. Wait, it's the last half of this season. Better love Rose now yeah exactly things like that where they just mess but but as a, as like by himself he's fantastic and that's oh, yeah, what, the specials that's, era that's midnight shows you know? yeah like while he's by himself he is a fantastic fantastic <laughs> yeah oh, just, oh my god and the specials i just realized yeah. oh, i'm not the survivor specials. i'm the winner oh the specials are so good the next doctor planet of the dead could have been better water on mars ah uh, there was two other episodes I can't really remember, but uh, you know, um, <laughs> it, was, it was good. Water, yeah. on, water on Mars and um, the Sand Sand Planet. Yeah, uh, Planet of the Dead. Yeah, Planet that was. Dead. Yeah, those two, fantastic. Yeah, mm. oh, man. Um, so yeah, uh, I love Next Doctor though. I, I really do. I love the Next Doctor. Um, so I'm actually keen to talk about about that when we get to it. But we're not there right now. Uh, Technophobia, fantastic. Definitely a great entry point for new listeners to Big Finish, which a lot of people were. I'm so glad this box set like really hit it off. And with that, we're going to jump into Time Reaver with The Late Crow. The Late Crow, Time Reaver, take us away. Alrighty, so Doctor and Donna land on this place called Calibris, which is a spaceport planet where um, it's, kind of, it's kind of like your every day's... Like, imagine just like every sort of possible thing that you could do happening that's all happening yeah. on this place the, that's the great. intro scene in this episode filled me with so much joy because i could just feel how happy Tim was to be there like yep. that's fantastic yeah but um meanwhile while they're all landing and doing the whole sort of look at this place duda um we meet this uh young girl uh we don't know her name yet but she's um she's wanting to find this place called uh v- vagabond's reach and she comes across <laughs> yes. this and she comes cool across name. this yeah and she comes across this uh octopusy person and um i am actually they, surprised that this octopus wasn't played by the actor who played sill it sounded like him mm, mm. but um she, turns out she has this special weapon and this octopus person wants it and so but he wants more of it and so this girl finds herself captured and he uses this gun on her things like to go a bit weird for her and she can't move or speak and she's all sort of whoa lsd seemingly uh, well, well who knows well we'll have to listen to the rest of the story to find out meanwhile the doctor's like okay donna i need this thing called a fluid link because i'm because big finish like yo you know the doctor <laughs> needs some repair things every now and then right <laughs> but i love when he did that though because like does he really need a fluid link because the last time this happened yeah the daleks <laughs> Yeah, but the doctor's got a buddy on this place, so just, so they go de- find their way around to him, and on their way they find a lovely busker, <laughs> and, <laughs> and he's not. Yeah, Penny <laughs> does not play the bag. <laughs> actually, what happens? And Donna does pay him, but uh, the doctor gives gives off these uh, was it sort of psychic earplugs sort of thing, so they won't because this Calibris is so loud, so they have these earmuffs, so they'll only hear what they're kind of directly listen to which is a good idea when you're on a busy place why can't i have this that'd be great um can tune out so much bullshit in life that'd be awesome um anyway so they, they meet up with uh the doctor's mate who is uh soren is it soren yeah, yeah. soren isn't it yeah and cool. i just i just love this guy i wish he was actually on the show like i love he's just great and he's all like oh doctor nice to see you again uh yep uh, I don't have any of those in stock right now. Stick around for a minute. I'll whack you one up. The doctor's like, oh, yeah, ch- sweet ass. We'll just chill here for a moment. He and Don have a bit of a brief conflab. And um, they've noticed that uh, there's sort of a policing force on place, which the doctor kind of finds amu- finds concerning because they haven't been on this place before. The Vicentians, these people are. And he's like, hmm, what, what are these people doing here? This is, hmm. And just at that moment, said Vicentians come in to do a routine check on Soren's place. And Soren's like, <laughs> 
I was like, yeah, I'm out of here in a suit. Bye. And, and he's um, like, oh, Doctor, could you just look after the place for a bit? <laughs> he just, yeah. he just like, and even Donna's like, he's gone, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I love how Donna's even like, but the shop's open. Why don't they just come in? Why are they, why are they just standing outside demanding what? But um, the, the Doctor and Donna also take off, as you do. And so they're floating about. Uh, the lady who we, the girl from the South Story who we find out his name is Cora, she's still not having a very good time. And um, as it turns out, there are these guns called Time Reavers, and they're really not good things, where they basically extend out one moment so you experience it for a really, really, really long time. And the Doctor's a bit disgusted by this, which is fair enough. And uh, it turns out that's why the Vicentians are here to try and work out where these things are coming from. Well, not where they're coming from, we'll get to that in a bit. But um, where this particular Time Reaver gun is, and to catch it and get rid of it. That's what they're here to do. And the doctor's like, let me help. And they're a bit like, but have you got the forms to do it? And the doctor's like, nah. <laughs> they're, see, I haven't got... <laughs> their, their penchant for paperwork is one of my favourite things about this race. They're just like, nope, we can't do anything without the proper paperwork. <laughs> it was yeah, like, they remind yeah. me of the um, vocals from, um, from Hitchhiker's But like, oh, yeah. no, not nearly as, as, as like, not so much of a piss take as the Vogons were, but still kind of like in that same vein. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the doctor's like, you know what? I haven't got any forms. And the Vicentians is like, take me to your boss and we'll sort this all out. And so, all right, we're going to arrest you and take you to our boss then. So they do that. And they arrive at the boss. I love that early in the story, the Donna's just like, oh, I'd love to go to a coffee shop. And the was like, there's not a coffee shop here. And they get to the Vicentians base and there's totally coffee there. <laughs> and, uh, and coffee and sco- scones, actually. <laughs> and the doctor's like, what? What is this? What is this? And Donna's like, told you, and enjoy some coffee and scones. And they have a conflab with the uh, head for Sintian. And uh, he's all like, yep, we're here to try and catch the Time Reavers. And the doctor's like, great, I want to ha- I'm He says, I'm going to help. And he's like, no, no, you don't need to. And the doctor's like, okay, correction. I'm going to help and you're going to deal with it. And the Vicentian's like, ah, oh, okay then, fine. <laughs> Damn, here's, this, guy's, here's- this guy knows our tricks, the bastard. <laughs> right, here's what we know. Let's let's do what we can do. Keep in touch. You go do what you do. Keep in touch. So that's what they do. They go out again. And uh, they go along, and they find themselves to that Vagabond's Ranch. <laughs> and uh, it's basically just a great smuggler's tavern where just all... The, it, I was listening to it, and it felt like I was suddenly launched into like a like a pirate story or something. Yeah, yeah. The Doctor really uh, wanted to be in a pirate story. Though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the, the whole story, he's like, I want to be pirating and stuff. Vagabond's <laughs> Ranch. <laughs> and the best bit is when a fight breaks out... This, I swear the person who did the score for the story knew it, and it almost sounds like Pirates of the Caribbean music. <laughs> Uh, it's a good time but a fight breaks out and they find Octopus Fala and Cora who's not having a good time luckily because Octopus what is Octopus Gully let's stop calling him Octopus Fala Gully <laughs> Gully name. and because uh, he wants to preserve this uh, this, th- this time we've gun because it's very very it, it gives him money and who doesn't want money why not he says like, let's use a little bit so luckily Cora's comes to her senses pretty quickly when she's rescued that's good turns out she's a Vicentian as well and funnily enough, the daughter of the head Vicentian fellow that they found at the base thing back there. That, like, huh, hmm, okay then. So, but anyway, no time for chatting yet. Gully's not too impressed about his plans being spoiled. But um, they escape down a hatch and they seal it behind them. So, which, uh, so they're down in the tunnels and Gully and his band of merry men <laughs> have to... <laughs> that's about, although I love the second in command, he just gets, he's almost like a bad Smee, just like... <laughs> Kind of gets pushed around the end. Like, I, I did good, but no, you didn't. Thwack. It's, it's sort of the relationship they have. I love that relationship when bad guys and their lackey. It's a good time. Yeah, but the thing <clears> is, <throat> you, you have to be able to write good henchmen. Like, that's, that's the Yeah, point. that's that's as long as you can do that, then it's good. But yeah, but it's big finish, so good writers. We love stuff. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. um, so they're down in the tunnels, and the doctor's like, okay, uh, Corey, your name is it? Cool. What the hell's the dealio here? Why do you have a time reaver? What the hell? And Cora's just like, but a planet, it's dying, and I want, I, I wanted to make people happy, and I felt so sorry for her because she, the way her mind works, she didn't think of it as a weapon. She's like, this thing can extend out moments, awesome, extend out happy moments, extend out experience of the final sunset. Hell yeah, let's yeah. give that joy to the rest of the universe. Oh, they're using it for bad things now. Bummer. <laughs> Bit of a kick in the gut there, but um. But just as they're sort of having a bit of a reminisce about the sad truth of reality, the band of merry men in Gully have got down to the tunnels, 
And Coyle's like, yeah, hell no, nah, I'm not getting back with that guy. Fwoom, she's gone. Doctor's like, whoop, whoop, stop running. And Donna's like, I'm on it. Fwoom, gone. And before the Doctor has time to say head or tails, it's like, oh, yeah, and you've both gone. And I've lost in the tunnels. Whoops. Lovely. So, the turns out also there's a train tunnels. So that's awesome. And of course, because... But the, everyone's like, but we, we would hear trains. And then they remember, oh, yeah, we've got those psychic. Yeah, those psychic things, um, I love when they suddenly realize they're in deep shit. They're like, oh. Like, like casually sitting up, good stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Who so, wrote this? Definitely yeah. not Helen <laughs> 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 Yeah, well, no, I so, forgot. Isn't there a clone in this episode? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they narrowly dodge being hit by a train. And, but yeah, Doctor and Cora are running about trying to catch each other. The Doctor's lost them. Gully and his merry men are having a runabout as well. And so the doctor's like, right, okay. Better go and have a chill chill sesh with the uh, head vicinity and maybe he knows more of what that was going on. That's his daughter. So he does that. So he goes and has a thing. He's like, yo, did you not know lose your daughter here? And he's like, yeah, yeah, I did know that. You didn't think to tell me. No, no, I didn't actually. And he's like, well, that was a bit dumb. Yeah, it was. <laughs> but, and so the head vicinity. What is head vicinity's name? Oh, uh, well, I, thanks for the Tyler's wiki. I can tell you. Is that... Roan? Is it Roan? It's Roan. Is it Ro- Thank you. It's just like, there are a bunch of names, but I can't tell the names of them. Dude, the he's voiced guys. by Terry Malloy? Are you serious? By Davros. He doesn't sound anything like Davros. Well done, Terry Malloy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Hell yeah. Um, so, yep, Roan's like, yeah, so I, I engineered these things to try and, because our planet's dying, and I thought, you know, let's, we all kind of have to stay there. We're a bit of a, of one mind, of one sort of thing race and we want to just have a nice sunset with our planet as it dies and you know let's extend that moment out for my people it's a nice thing and the doctor's like yeah but but i didn't 100 percent agree and stole one of them and took off ah that's not good no it's not meanwhile gully and his band of merry men have caught up with uh, the others and so they that's not good and they're, cli- they're climbing they're climbing they're climbing up this massive um no not yet backtrack it turns out the um, second in command finds him first because uh, he's like, I'm going to prove his. No, he plays off the whole, my boss is mean to me card, where it starts to work. There's a, ha 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 ha. No, never mind. I was tricking you the whole time. But then he totally gets time revered. Oh, it's, just, oh, I it's all fun and games was... until someone gets time revered. <laughs> exactly. It really, it really is. <laughs> so he didn't think this through. But, um,. But as kind of a bit of a sort of, but luckily I still have a plan before this kicks in. He he charges, he um, gets a bomb going on, a time river bomb, which also is set up early in the story because, yay, setups are good. Um, <laughs> Big finish, like, we love setups. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's like, let's take you in with a time river bomb on your back into the middle of the city. Yeah, let's do that. Meanwhile, the doctor's like, so, Rowan, can we track down these people? And it's like, hold on, I can do that myself. Let's do this. And then it's like, hold on a minute. She's right outside. I'm going to go and see her. Let's go. And the doctor, Donna goes, yeah, I've got a bomb on my back now. And and I love how- That's such was, a good reference to this something on and, your back. Yeah, that, that was just like, there's something on your- I was like, oh, big finish, you. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so the doctor's like, ha, huh, okay, let's get you out of somewhere where there's all the peoples. Let's do that first. So they do that first, and it's like, right, let's get this off your back. And it, the thing is, because um, the octopus fella, he's got goo, gooey stuff, and it's super gooey stuff, and he used that to stick it to Donna's back. And so it's very, very sticky. So the doctor gets it off, but now it's stuck to him. Just, ah, oh, damn it. Like when you're um, playing with sticky stuff as a kid, you try and take it off one finger, and it's just stuck to your next finger. <laughs> Fun times. But then uh, Rowan comes down, and he goes, okay, this is just my mess. I created, recreated the Time Reaver guns. My bad, peoples. I'm going to take this off you, seeing as splits and you take it off someone that sticks to you. I'll take it. Everyone's like, no, 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 don't do that. And he's like, I'm doing it. I'm sacrificing myself. And Cora's like, you can't, can you not do that? I, the whole reason I did this thing was to get your attention again, and now I've got it. No, don't. And he does it. And he explodes, but because it's Time Reaver Bomb, he experiences the explosion for ages. He mega did. Yeah, it's like <laughs> yeah. just the he's worst like way to go out. Like, kind of like yeah. Sarah Kingdom. Yeah, yeah, in a way, he is sort of Sarah Kingdomed. <laughs> I love and how that's a term now. You just get Sarah Kingdom. <laughs> right. And his performance, along with um, Cora's performance, there were profuse tears coming from her face. There were a lot of them. Yeah. And Cora, understandably, after she f- understandable crying moment, because to be honest, I would probably not be able to do much after I 
not only experienced that, but saw it firsthand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she's just like, right, I'm totally going to pwn the guy responsible for this. So she goes off, and the doctor's like, no, don't go. Ah, okay, we got to go after Adonna. And I was like, righto. And so they go off, and then they find themselves back down the tunnels, chasing after a band of merry men. And they catch up to them, and that's all very well and good. And um, Dully is a massive um, shaft thing, which leads to a spaceship here on the top. And I love how Don's like, why does he have a shaft up there? And the doctor's like, yeah, no one's allowed to, but they just totally do anyway, because it's a convenient place out the way to park. That's fair call. People do that in real life, so sweet as. And uh, so it's a massive oxygen vent, and it's not doing much at the moment, so they're safe to climb up. That's what they're doing. And Gully gets to the top, and Cora's shouting abuse at him, catches up to him. They have a tiffle, and it's all going very sort of going either way. The doctor tries... Donna, Doctor and Donna try to catch up to him, but um, the, the Gully gets into the spaceship, so that's all very well and good. But um, unfortunately for him, he also gets time revered, which is a bit of a bit of a bummer. He got caught out by his own weapon, and um, so he's kind of stuck in a position where he's in his ship, but he can't move. And the Doctor notices it and is like, "Hmm, okay, right. Let's um, let's get back down to the ladder." Is that like, why? Because he's igniting his ship and a massive oxygen flume is about to come up. Oh, okay. Let's, yeah, yeah, let's, yeah, let's. It's funny that you should mention that because they understand ignition of gases significantly yeah. <laughs> better than you who. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so oxygen flume does and I love that in slow motion. Gully's like, I can't move like the explosions. Ah, no. And he's Megadeth as well. Yeah. So the band, the band Megadeth is actually named after how, how old he was. <laughs> yeah, actually. I just love That's... how he looks like Davy Jones from... <laughs> <laughs> like, it's the Buck Sinus. It's just Davy Jones. Yeah. So. Yeah, actually. <laughs> it's fantastic. And it's like... And because it's called Vagabond's Reach as well. Like, that's yeah. genius. Yeah, it's perfect. It's just so piratey. I love it. <laughs> um, so that's all very well and good. And so he's Megadeth. And they go off and um, go back to the station. And they leave Cora to go back to the planet, but she decides at the last minute. Actually, I don't, I, after my dad, I, I, just, I just can't. So he, she, she decides to not get on the train. Meanwhile, the Doctor and Donna get their fluid link for the TARDIS, which they reinstall. And it's all fun and games. And they take off, and that's the end of the story. Well, that is quite the sci-fi romp, but it's like it's like a sci-fi fantasy as well, because it's got yeah. like, literal pirates in it. Yeah. Like. <laughs> That's yeah, great. It's a good time. It's uh, like Treasure Planet. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That's great. Actually, I love Treasure Planet so yeah, much. Yeah, I love Treasure Planet. Yep. Just a pity it was a financial bomb. Uh, yeah, I really wish it wasn't because I saw it and I was like, this movie's good. Why does it yeah. get bad reviews? It was It was. It was great. Yeah. It's Treasure, Treasure Island in space. Yeah, exactly. What like about it. What's not to love? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I read Treasure Island recently and Treasure Planet is better. <laughs> I'm saying. <laughs> right. like, so there's this whole chapter where just nothing happens and I'm like, holy shit, why is this book famous again? But, um, uh, yeah, so there is that. Uh, Harriet Skelly, your thoughts on Time Reaver? I'll come back for Lake Crows and finish it up. Harriet Skelly. Yes, it's just a good time, you know, high seas adventure in space. Um, you know, it's, it, it's, it's got some real interesting things. Um, the, the Vogon-esque, um, characters at the, it's so funny. Just the, having to sign forms and triplicates and stuff. It's, it's very much the, um, what, what people felt about or the, what history takes away from um from the pirate era where where england's trying to come in and be like hey fill out forms and law yeah and and then the pirates are all like no we don't want to do that and then they, they like they like make fun of the fact that these people are law abiding and that sort of stuff and it works so well and the fact that it's like a it's a it's all that this entire planet is all related to to traveling and stuff and it's like it's a port yeah it is it's, it's, a, port. it's, it's a pirate port it's it's so good it's so well thought out <laughs> Um, and it's just big finish in general, isn't it? Um, so many parts of this are thought out well. And then like the fact that it's like, it's like the governor's daughter. Is it, you know? <laughs> right. And she's oh. out trying to be a pirate. Yeah. Uh, it's so <laughs> good. It's so genius. <laughs> and it works so well. Um, and then like the whole, like, uh, the way that the doctor gets rid of the time reavers is to, like, oh, yeah, that's is to right. blast himself with them. Yeah. And he's just like, he's like, ah, uh, you know what? I'm just going to do it. And then just. And then, like, like it's immediately once it's over, like, Donna's like, "Oh, you're alright," and he's like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm fine. I'm totally alright. It's not like I was, I was there for like eternity and stuff. <laughs> it's okay." Um, like everyone else is like, 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 she's like, "How long is he gonna be in there to, to Soren?" And, and he's like, 
Yeah, and she's like, actually, don't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, don't actually tell me, but he's probably going to be in there for hundreds, if not thousands of years. Yeah, but yeah, eternity is not a big feat to him. Um, and yeah, he could just turn his brain off, which is, it seems like he did. Um, and then he's all like, you know what I could have really done with this in there? A book to read <laughs> to the library <laughs> yeah oh yeah exactly to the library oh that's fantastic oh that means that's like, what they're doing exactly so that means that these stories must have taken place of the dumb wasp episode <sighs> that's okay that's okay we've listened to these stories and they're good um the late crow time reaver yep it was a very 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 good time um yep um I don't really know what else more to say other than what's already being said. It's just a really good story. And um, just as you pointed out, show up, big friend, show up, um, knew her again. Yeah, they totally wrote that scene writer. specifically to do that. And she's a female writer too. So I'm just like, duh, 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 duh. Yeah. So being female does certainly say that you, you, that there's no relevance in that to whether you or not you can write good who. The fact of whether or not your name is Helen Raynor <laughs> is whether or not you can write <laughs> Yeah. <her>. If your <laughs> name is Helen and Raynor together, don't write Doctor Who. Like you could be different. Uh, yeah. Can I add? Don't write at all. <laughs> <laughs> right? She doesn't know how to do. Like, dude, the the Dalek penis face episode. Like, as soon as that comes out, it's just like never hire her again. I don't give a shit if she's my best friend. Just don't do it. Yeah. And those episodes got destroyed. They were not well received. Why would you give her another two parter? Did you contractually say she was allowed to have two two parters? Because that's on you, boo. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so so Jenny T. Colgan, um, and and the female writers at Big Finish, I really wish they were the female writers that wrote for New <laughs> so much. Uh, but much. but in saying that, we saw that see that Sarah Dollard um, was actually good if Stephen wasn't trying to control her work. So yeah, exactly. you know, um, like you know, to be honest, if you want to come and write a Big Finish, Sarah, I'd be totally on board. Uh, especially if you like did something and they're like, no, you need to maybe not do that because it's not. <laughs> then that would have been then, then it's fine. Everything's fine. Uh, Jenny T. Colin, I know you're not listening, but I am probably going to tag you in today's tweet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> fantastic, just fantastic work. Well done. So we're going to go on to our last story for today: Death and the Queen. Death and the Queen has them landing uh, in <laughs> the French Riviera in the 1700s, <laughs> and the doctor's like, it's not Blackpool. Now that's great because Blackpool is a big finished destination. Um, it's where a very super dead companion comes from. Uh, oh, super dead! Yeah, super mega, mega super dead. dead. <laughs> uh, it's also where the uh, the sixth Doctor was meant to go during the Lost season, uh, which Big Finish adapted, and people need really need to check that out. It's uh, called uh, All the Fun at the Fair. I thoroughly suggest that story. It was a Big Finish I first ever heard, and it's the six taking on the Toy Maker. It is incredible. Um, and I'm not just saying that because the Toymaker is my favourite villain. Okay, I'm kind of saying that because the Toymaker is my favourite villain. Uh, but anyway, Death and the Queen. So Donna meets this uh, charming gentleman at this at this roulette table. And she's like, I've always wanted to play the spinny things. And he's like, my dear, it's called roulette. And he's like, oh, Shantae. And so I'm just like, no, don't. Pl- please don't. Like, the TARDIS has translation circuits, remember? She's like, oh, I don't care, bozo. And like, Donna and this guy. Yeah, exactly. Donna and this fella have this montage relationship and the doctor just keeps ruining their time and it's so good. I just it's hard to put my finger on why it works, but it just does. Ten and is the like, annoying it's brother. So, it's so new who is yeah. like, like the montage like yeah. relationship that Donna has. It's so new who, but it works. It's so it works so well. And uh, the doctor as the annoying and in this case, younger brother, very younger sibling trait where he's like constantly talking and ruining the moment where the older sibling is trying to like kiss her partner and he's like hey you want to do the thing no i don't want to do the thing i want to kiss my old boyfriend go away but he's like <laughs> he's like keep something up my friends are they gonna have a picnic and he goes you know picnics are a bit naff let's go to a church instead <laughs> and i was like why are you so annoying and they, they managed to like lose the doctor uh but donna ends up becoming betrothed and is in this love-hate relationship that seems to be mostly love with the queen mother it's so hard to describe but it feels like a reflection of her own mother uh, with her relationship mm. with sylvia fantastically written well done big finish um who is the writer on this one uh james goss oh, well, oh i like james goss uh so yeah so they've gone ahead and if <laughs> they've got this whole relationship it's moved so quickly but it's meant to be like a, been a couple of months apparently so <laughs> the doctor finally turns up at this place and he's like i need to see the queen and the, the she's got these like real dopey guards 
is so fantastic. It reminds me of the card guards from the Disney version of Alice in Wonderland, the original good Disney version and not the Tim Burton remake. Um, and so they're like real like, halt! And Ted's like, I have. Oh, well, uh, get off yours. I need to talk to the queen. And they like bring him in. <laughs> and then it's just like, well, I am the queen. And it's fantastic. He's like, I can't believe you're the queen. You played it off quite well. Donna starts talking about what her life's been like with these little interlude flashbacks. Um, the fact that her and the mum are like love hate getting along so wonderful uh, her husband sort of seems to be a bit of a mama's boy uh which at the uh, uh, in this time period was very much a thing for the aristocracy uh because the father was like all i did was create the seed i'm gonna never be home now bye and so <laughs> you know the aristocracy guys great sure i'm glad serfdom existed no i'm not um so <laughs> the doctor's like hey uh death's turning up and donna's like what the hell are you talking about you're gonna ruin all my weddings <laughs> Yeah. that's a great yes, call <laughs> and then he's like no 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 he goes when they look out the window the queen mother turns up like are you a suitor i want to i want to attack you make you go away someone bring me some money <laughs> he's like no 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 no. there's actually a deadly cloud outside and donna's like i never thought i wanted this guy to ever say this doctor but do you want to take a walk around my ramparts <laughs> and it's like so sexual <laughs> but yeah. at the same time so actually what they need to do so they go walk the ramparts and there's a deadly cloud and then she goes how do you know the cloud's deadly and then the cloud <laughs> says I bring death. The timing <laughs> yeah. is so good. And she's like, oh, I see. That's how you know it's a deadly cloud. I bring death. And then like he sends the death cloud as like, Rrr. and then the, the prince turns up. He's going to become the king. And he's like, men, fire your arrows. And they list the arrows in the cloud. And the doctor goes, is he shooting arrows in a cloud? Donna's like, shut up. And he's like, you know how to pick him. It's just so good. <laughs> it's fantastic. Because doc the Doctor and Donna are very much the sibling companion uh, dynamic. And mm. it works so well. And this story just like solidifies them as brother sister. Just wonderful. Their whole like, oh, no, 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 we're not together. It didn't really need to happen. They, they did do it in the story. I felt like I could have done without that. But I mean, you just get that feeling that they are just essentially brother and sister. One's an alien. One is it? Oh, I suppose they're both aliens to each other. So they're just two aliens in a box. Uh, mm. And it's just wonderful. <laughs> So I was like, okay, look, I've actually taught my handmaidens how to read. And the doctor's like, ah, oh, 1700s. He's like, ah, oh. she's like, I don't care. And she's taught them how to read this like political, like female empowerment book. So fantastic. Thank you, Donna. That's all I needed it's to hear. They occasionally say death to the capitalist. Pig. <laughs> <laughs> so Hello, doctor, you capitalist pig. Oh, pleasure <laughs> to meet you. Like, <laughs> <laughs> And so he's like, wow, I really like that you've made things real progressive here. I mean, it's the wrong time period. And she goes, shut up about the web of time, all right? And that's great because web of time is very much a classic Who thing. Mm -hmm. But I'm happy that they like Big Finish got the new Who people to start saying it because continuity, it's a thing. <laughs> it's a thing, guys. It's a thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so the doctor's like, oh, man, I need to figure out what's going on here. And Donna's like, oh, well, um, I, I noticed that they were the, the skeletons that the cloud's sending down. To kill the people here are afraid of the flag it's the only thing that survived the war that they just had this like 10 second war that they have um so i decided to coat the castle in it and the doctor's like wow that's actually really intelligent and she's like yeah best tip in chiswick so <laughs> she's tempted chiswick the whole castle she's made sure that the, the, they can't get in the doctor befriends oh, what was her name Hos, hospice hos cool Hortense. So Hortense is like, hey, I'm Hortense. And he's like, you're awesome. And Hortense is fantastic. I legit wish she could have become companion material. Yep. Because that would have yeah. been great. Like a, like a, no. a just she becomes an Amazonian warrior princess. Yeah. She actually becomes an Amazonian <laughs> so warrior fine. princess. So that's it's just as good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm totally okay with that. Becomes the actual Wonder Woman. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Damn, that theme song is amazing. But anyway, um, Penny Jenkins, if you could just make a movie with uh, Amy Henning as the writer, that'd be the best movie ever made. Just throw that out there. <laughs> Penny Jenkins, I'm going to have to tweet you as well. Um, so um, <laughs> I actually sent out that tweet and Amy Henning liked it. I was pretty proud. But. Um, <laughs> So the doctor's like, oh, this is cool. Hortense is awesome. So the Donna Donna and Hortense do a way better job of protecting the kingdom than the queen mother and the prince do. It's fantastic. And the prince is like, oh, but the bargain. And then death turns up and Donna's like, really? <laughs> Actual death. And he's like, this, death's really polite. I love it. It's like, it kind of reminds me of Bill and Ted's bogus journey where like <laughs> death is like this really polite dude. He's like, can I have a dance, please? <laughs> and he's dancing with Donna. I'm like, 
you guys could not have made this any more funny than it already was like the story even those really dark brutal moments is very funny um the fact that like death is like really this really polite gentleman that's like dancing with her like i would have to kill you though and then donna defeats him by having the ancient text of the mephistophelines or whatever they're called written on her undies and her undies well, yeah. so the flag that they have is also a is also the, the um, contract the binding right? contract that they have with the with these people um that have have imitated death to um to trick them into paying up with the soul every every so often yeah um and the contract is is unda- undamageable by them because of its nature um so she realized pretty pretty quickly that she should uh she should use it in, in any way possible so she got yeah, her handmaidens to knit it into her into her dress and yeah. her clothing um <laughs> i just love that as part of her undies as well it's my favorite the best thing is the is the death thought he could get into my pants <laughs> <laughs> nope yeah. <laughs> donna <laughs> yeah it's that, that's fantastic thank you donna and then just like oh the contract's been broken oh. and so they take away their support and the doctor's like cool oh, all right never ever heard of this goritania place but it's now part of the timeline and we're gonna go well so they, they leave the perception filter stuff oh right yeah they do leave the perception filter um and that's why we don't know it exists warrior. The Amazonian warrior princess still kicks kicks the rest of the skeleton's asses. Um, that's the end of it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I love how she's like the first person to kill a skeleton as well in the story. She just grabs the prince's sword and is like, dun, 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 kills all of them. And I was just like, this is badass. How cool is this? And then um, that's the end of the story. It's just, it's awesome. Well done, Big Finish. Just well done. This story has some pretty brutal moments, but God, it's funny. It's just so funny. Like, ah. Yes. Ah, and Tennant, Tennant and Catherine Tate shine in this box set but that last story for me was saving the best for last I loved Death and the Queen especially the fact that her undies defeated the final boss like <laughs> what what yeah, Death, Death could not get into weapon. <laughs> he was also oh your undies no dead <laughs> that was the end of Death so the late crime would have grabbed your thoughts come back for Harriet Scullies and wrap us up for to the day I uh, tripped over my words there uh, so the late crime Death and the Queen everything you just said it was it was great it was it was hilarious heartwarming at times but sad at times but brutal at times but overall an amazing story I love that um, Hortense is just a general now <laughs> she just is now and Donna's like look up the word republic <laughs> I love this what was it love the smell of um Regime, regime change. Regime change. change in <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Solid goal. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, don't, I love um, the whole uh, back and forth. Yeah, as you say, Tennant and Catherine Tate are just great in the story. I love the back, I love the back and forth between the Queen Mother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love how um, Donna just doesn't take it for, at all and she gets insulted every time. Just, and even the doctor just tells her to shut up and even her son by the end is like yeah kind of shut up mother <laughs> oh it's a good time and how death is polite oh it's just so good death was so polite like it was so random could i have this dance please like just with this epic demon the door voice asking to enter <laughs> guys can you let me in it's death like come on man i gotta work to i gotta work to a schedule here guys yeah ah oh, it's just so good Big finish. Stop showing up literally everyone. <laughs> oh, man. They've got the rights to the comics. If you guys don't adapt Izzy, I hate you, Big Finish. Um, so <laughs> they're going to do yeah, it. Come on, Big Finish. Keep it in your undies. Your undies. <laughs> yeah, on. keep it in your undies. Write the contract in your undies, Big Finish. I'll sign that. Uh, so, uh, Harris Kelly, Death and the Queen. Yeah, it was a good time. Um, there's just there's so much to unpack with it because it's so, so good. So, so good. So many different elements. That, that come together and big finish just piss so good <laughs> why couldn't they be the ones doing new who <laughs> i would love for them to be the ones to do new who because i'm pretty certain the first female doctor would have been caroline ford um yeah and that would have been great great right okay yeah. my guys well uh, i've gave my opinions while i was doing the synopsis it's fantastic this box set is totally worth it it is five new zealand dollars for this entire box set at the moment um, if you are part of the Humble Bundle audiobooks, bundles, thingamabob, whatever they call it, um, you can get these for even less. Uh, for 12 bucks, you can get a whole heap of Big Finish. Unfortunately, it does not add it to your Big Finish account, but it is in 320 kilobytes per second, lossless flack. So that is definitely worth it. And you can pick up a few of these stories on Spotify. Guys, we'll see you next week. <laughs>